Many teachers I've worked with intuitively know that play is best for young children, but they're feeling more and more pressure to implement play because of the increased focus on academics in little ones. This talk will look at the emotional, social, and academic benefits of play. We'll look at what type of play produces these benefits, what your role as the teacher is, and give you the tools to advocate for play in your own management. There'll be references at the end and I really encourage you to have a look at them, read them. We've even downloaded the white paper for playful learning by the Lego Foundation and much of this talk is based on that research. Preschool classrooms are typically filled with a range of different children, each with their own set of strengths and needs. The ECD teachers that I've worked with have often said that they get a gut feeling or an instinct when a child in their group needs more support in a particular area or possibly from a different type of professional. But they also describe not knowing where to go from there. What is it that they are seeing? How do they chat to their parents about their thoughts? And how do they best support this type of learner in their classroom? If those are also some of your questions, then you've definitely come to the right place. In this two-part masterclass, firstly, we're going to delve into what typical development of preschoolers looks like. Then we're going to talk more about the four most common neurodevelopmental challenges that we see in our groups, namely ASD, autistic spectrum disorder, sensory processing difficulties, developmental delay and cerebral palsy. We will talk about what these are and what they might look like in the classroom. Then lastly, we talk about the practicalities of how you actually support a learner with neurodiverse needs in your classroom and why this is so important to do so. As an occupational therapist based in education for the last 12 years, I'm passionate about inclusive education as well as supporting teachers, which is exactly what this masterclass aims to do. I would love to share my experience with you so that you can feel confident that you've got the toolbox necessary to support all types of learners in your classroom, particularly those with neurodiverse needs. Human beings are so unique in the way that they respond to the world. And that's partly due to the way that they've been nurtured or the experiences they've had in life, but it's also partly due to their sensory personalities. Some little ones are extremely laid back with a very high threshold for sensory information, whereas others of us are much more sensitive and we see the world through a lens of flight, fright and fight. So how do you identify this? How do you know what the children in your class are and how do you tailor their world to their sensory personalities? Well, I'm Meg Fora. I'm an occupational therapist with more than 25 years of experience in sensory reintegration. This is my passion and my speciality. I have worked and studied over many years. I lecture worldwide on sensory integration and I have developed the four sensory personalities which were based on Winnie Dunn's work. The four sensory personalities are the settled toddler, sensitive toddler, the social butterfly and the slow to warm up. Now each of these personalities interact very differently. So if you want to know what little one's sensory personalities are, how to identify it in the classroom and how to adjust the classroom to optimize learning because of the sensory personalities, then this is a masterclass for you. By the end of this masterclass, you will know which friendships to encourage, how to tailor snack time, how to set up your classroom to bring out the best in children, and which activities work well with which sensory personalities. So if you want to be empowered and really adjust your classroom to the little ones in your class, do not miss this masterclass on the sensory personalities. Toddlers are in an incredibly important stage of development. Not only are they developing their sense of self and their sense of autonomy, which as we know can be frustrating, but they are developing self-regulation. Now self-regulation is a critical skill and it plays out throughout our lives. In fact, it's the foundation for many aspects of success. What we know about self-regulation is that it improves academic abilities as well as success in other areas of life. And the reason for that is that once little ones have learned how to self-regulate or have developed self-regulation, they're able to self-regulate cognitive control and their thought processes as well as executive function. And that's the reason that self-regulation is so critically important. I'm an occupational therapist with more than 25 years of work with little ones who are dysregulated. So I've worked with little ones with sleep problems and feeding problems and mood difficulties as well. And so a few years ago, I decided to really research this really, really carefully and look at a massive literary review as to how self-regulation develops and what we can do to improve it. So I am really, really excited to bring you this masterclass. We're gonna learn about not only what self regulation is, but also how to develop it, and more importantly, what you can do to develop it. What many people don't realize is that self-regulation happens in the context of a relationship, you as a co-regulator with the little one. In addition to that, we're going to talk about how frustrations play a very important part in developing self-regulation, and of course, the secret power of language when it comes to self-regulation. We'll go on and talk about imaginary play, and then finally look at discipline in the context of self-regulation. So if there's one thing that you should be doing to empower yourself as a teacher that's watching this particular masterclass on self-regulation and the toddler.